Ah, I mean, it, we watched it multiple times so far this weekend, and it has been very impressive. A lot of good stuff going on with that deck. So let's see if he can keep it up here and take down Ross Merrim once again. Can we get confirmation on Ross's age? He's 30. That's Look, wild. The mo he, I don't know if you've seen the video of him getting beat by Patrick Sullivan. I know we only play it 400 times <laughs> that a weekend. That aged him eight years. Uh, honestly, it slapped a beard on him. <laughs> right? He lost, and he immediately grew a beard. Right, you see a Tav stomping ground from Miriam. Lim's going to start with an Inquisition of Kozilek. Takes the only ramp spell in Sakura Tribe Elder. You see a Chandra Torch of Defiance and four lands. I'm actually curious if, I mean, if Ross draws a land here, I think he would 100% cycle the the land, uh, the shelter ticket. But uh, hmm, I'm curious what he's going to do. Probably going to cycle. This is going to crack a Worded Foothills going to 19 here. It is a lot of lands. Right, but the deck wants a lot of lands. Oftentimes, the games it loses are the ones where it misses its sixth land drop, and he doesn't quite have six lands at the moment, so. I suppose it's a matchup where Lim's deck does not have much closing speed. The turn two play is just to tap the Blood Crypt, so Miriam does have some time, but he found a forest. Forest is so much worse than Mountain that when he finds that forest untapped, you know, certainly as compared to a tap stomping ground, what have you. It makes sense to cycle here, and he does. But he also has played against John, knows the deck list, and also knows that he could be facing off against a Blood Moon here shortly. Wants to make sure he has access to green mana. Mm -hmm. That was more speaking to the timing. Sure, sure. No, I agree, like, fetching a forest early, especially when you have a bunch of virtual mounds in your hand with cinder glaze, stomping around, and things of that nature, you don't really want to fetch up a forest you just, uh, because it makes hitting with Valakut a bit harder. But it was uh, that snow-covered yeah. forest for that Field of the Dead package, notably. Yeah, and uh, that actually came up uh, big time earlier in the, the day, playing against Allison Warfield. He actually ended up taking it down through a Witchbane Orb because he was able to escape shift to make seven zombies and follow that up with a Primeval Titan to make a lot more zombies. Lim's going to start applying some pressure. He's a uh, seasoned Pyromancer, going to discard a Coligan's Command and a land, makes one elemental. Miriam's going to sacrifice Red Foothills, finds the forest to go with the snow-covered forest on the end step. So now he has uh, the option to deploy a Chandra Torch of Defiance here on his fourth turn. Uh, I'm curious if he's going to tick up or kill the Seasoned Pyromancer or continue shuffling. He's definitely going to continue shuffling. Okay. Well, you were wrong. The mm. moment you finished the sentence, he was done. I, 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 it's like I summoned, I caused that. Good, 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 yeah. good. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, he has a Field of the Dead in hand. Looks like he's drawn a bunch more lands. Maybe one green spell hiding out over there. Might be a Primeval Titan. Otherwise, he probably would have cast it already. I need more, uh, I need more like, Field of the Dead, Oracle Moldiah stuff going on in my life. I feel like that's uh, something I need to explore. Sure. Yeah, Oracle of Moldiah would be quite a bit better than this Chandra in this spot. Yeah. Just get some of those lands out there. Put you in position to draw and win with escape shift. Sure. Sometimes with Oracle Moldiah, you can just naturally win by playing land drops, though. That's one of the reasons why it's so memorable. So here is that Chandra. It'll go up to five. Exile Sakura Tribe Elder. Limb to 18. It's kind of just a speed bump. Limb's going to throw quite a bit of damage here at the Chandra to clean it up, probably. Uh, two of the Pyramids are probably a bolt coming from hand, if I had to guess. Yep, Pyromancer plus Bolt takes down Chandra. The Ross Miriam token connects with Ross Miriam, putting him to 17. And Dread Horde Arcanist joins the party for Lim. Little Ross on Ross violence. <laughs> and uh, another land goes to Miriam's hand at the draw step. A Valakut picked up for turn. Well, Ross has got to let Lim do uh, one more turn here before doing much of anything. Ooh, Obstinate Bailoth? Okay, that was the green card hiding out, I guess. I thought that uh, it was a Primeval Titan, but that one of Ops and Baloth here, looking okay, uh, protects his life total a bit, forces, or uh, creates some awkward uh, attacks from, from John. Yeah, they'll buy some time. Turn was Valakut plus Baloth, Miriam to 21. Now back Lim's way. Liliana of the Veil will edict away the Baloth. That's the favorable exchange you can have with those two cards can be really ugly the other way. Now you see an attack with the Pyromancer, the Token, and the Arcanist. Arcanist is going to bring back that Inquisition. You see three lands in Miriam's hand. 
Now, if Ross has a draw here that features a ramp spell, he can uh, play the Field of the Dead from hand, play ramp spell, create a 2-2 zombie. Or he could draw a snow-covered mountain. Yeah, it's not, that's not it, Chief, but, you know. This is one of the reasons why you see some players avoid the Titan Shift deck. You don't have really control over your draw steps. Yeah, a lot of decks, you know, now that Faithless Looting go is gone, though, that, that is the case for a lot of different cards in the, or a lot of different decks in the format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you talk about shaping up draws, Season Pyromancer in either of these two decks, I suppose, is the best card at that. Yeah, Season Pyromancer is quite good. I expect its stock to rise dramatically as both a discard outlet as well as a way to just filter extra draws or rebuild once uh, you run out of stock. Yeah, I totally buy that. Now Liliana will go up to two. Miriam discard a land. Lim will discard an Arcanist. Uh. And here is Hazard the Fervent, and that one is heck bent. It's ready to go. Arcanist is really? going to bring a lightning bolt to combat. Four, five, six, seven, twelve coming across. Yes, really. Okay. You don't like heck bent? Heck bent. That's a heckin' good bent. <laughs> oh, drew a green card. Oh no, if that's from Evil Titan, we might have a real game here. You can make some serious zombies with the Primule Titan. Right, Snow-covered mountain, that's the seventh land and a seventh unique land. You see a zombie token showing up. Yeah, you see a forest, but you also, there's also a snow-covered forest hanging out there. It was moving Volley Acid Moss. I don't think that's going to do it. That's a lot worse than Primeval Titan. I don't think that's going to do it. Makes one more zombie. So you can block the Hazaret and 2-2. Two -two. And there's still two coming across. And the Hazard activation only makes it four. Might buy a turn. We'll see what Lim can do about it. Play a Marsh, flat, marsh Flats. Liliana takes care of one of blockers, so that should make this lethal. Yeah, Ross here uh, just lands in hand or whatever, so going to block the Hazard, go through the paces. Four damage is going to come across. And then Hazard Activation does the last point. And Ross picks up after a really bad draw in the first game. Yeah, pretty mopey start. Didn't cast a single ramp spell that game? Yeah, but that's because his one that he had in his opener got hit with an Inquisition of Kozilek. You know, Ross was set up to go turn two ramp spell, turn three Chandra Tortured Defiance on the play against a deck with a ton of, like, random spot removal. And it was going to be quite good. Ultimately, took the wind out of his sails, was able to deploy some pressure before the Chandra hit the battlefield in the name of Young Pyromancer, or Season Pyromancer. And that was really the story of the game. Ross just threw a couple lands, never had Primeval Titan, never had Scape Shift, and John took it down. Players reaching for their sideboards here. For Miriam, he has three Damping Sphere, two Obstinate Bayloth, two Force of Vigor, two Veil of Summer, a Fry, a Collector Roof, a Tireless Tracker, an Anger of the Gods, a Beast Within, and a Reclamation Sage. Uh, he knows that the uh, Blood Moons are around, so definitely going to bring in the Reclamation Sage. Beast Within, maybe just because it answers all the problematic permanents. Um, can occasionally target your own thing if your opponent hits you with a pillage and just make a 3-3, so it's never going to be dead. I just don't know if it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. uh, Anger of the Gods seems like it, it should be uh, pretty solid at sweeping up young py or Season Pyromancer tokens as well as the uh, uh, the 1-3, excuse me. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Um, Childish Tracker might be a, a good card to just um, throw John for a loop. You know, it, it dodges... Uh, you know, it's, it's good against uh, decks that are going to side out a bunch of spot removal, which John is likely going to do. Uh, Veil of Summer can protect him from discard and removal. I like a couple of those coming in. And then maybe some optic Bay loss to really punish a Liliana of the Veil. But you saw that game. It wasn't that good. It's only great if your opponent makes you discard it. Right. Sideboard for John Lim. Three Pillage. Three Collective Brutality, two Plague Engineer, two Nile Spellbomb, two Surgical Extraction, a Cletus, a Coligan's Command, and another Chandra. I guess this is his, this is his second, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at Ross's list. This is his only Chandra Torch Defiance. He has the Chandra Acolyte of Flames in the main deck. Right, the Torch Defiance from the previous game was Ross's. Yes. Um, I, I suspect Pillage is going to come in for sure. Uh, the Collective Brutalities should probably come in just because there's some way to interact with the ramp spells and if he's able to take away the ramp from Ross it's going to slow him down long enough for cards like Pillage 
and Blood Moon to, to help seal the deal. I don't really want to worry about the graveyard. Nile Swab on Surgical can sit on the sidelines. Uh, Plague Engineer, pretty useless. Uh, Kalidas, not really for this matchup. Cole against Command, doesn't really have a lot of great targets and has the downside of getting completely blown out by an opposite of Bayloth. And then the Chandra Torture Defiance is okay, but the closing speed on it is not that good. I'd like to thank everybody at home watching us live here on our Twitch channel. Or if you're watching a recording on YouTube, maybe check out our Twitch channel. We'd really appreciate your subscription, I suppose, on either platform. But the benefits for subscribing to the Twitch channel, you get to vote on the quarterfinals. That's why we are watching the Rakdos mid-range deck. You know, we might have put you through burn versus burn otherwise. Right. Custom emoticons and badge, including the Roll Todd. <laughs> That's only $4.99 a month. Yeah, the Roll Todd emote is one of my faves, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, it's only $4.99 a month. Uh, you could also just use your Twitch Prime. We'd appreciate it if you did that. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and that'll give you a free subscription, and we'd love it if you gave it to us. Ross here, looking over his sideboard, trying to make sure that he has the perfect configuration for this matchup. Uh, it's not one that you're going to see a whole lot, at least not yet. You know, this Rakdos deck, if it ends up winning the tournament, could pick up uh, a following. You know, that's usually how it starts. A new format happens. Someone puts up a great finish with uh, a new deck. And then all of a sudden, uh, the next event, it's everywhere. It runs rampant. It's a combination of two things that make sideboarding on Miriam's side difficult here. It's a deck that, as you said, he's only played this matchup once. He played against literally John Lim earlier this weekend. Yep. The other thing, mid-range decks, just kind of these value piles, you can't really hate them out. Yep. They just attack you from a bunch of different angles. And Miriam has stuff like the Reclamation Stage to fire, fight over Blood Moon, but this deck has some good card selection with the Season Pyromancer. It's attacking you from a bunch of different angles, and it's just a bunch of cards that are fine. You're not breaking up any synergies. You just have to take on every card as it's drawn one at a time. Yeah, but you can overpower them those cards quite well. I think you just have to focus, if you're Ross, on beating the hate cards. And the hate cards are the Pillages, the discard effects, and specifically the Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. If you can beat all three of those cards in a timely fashion, you should be good to go. Even in that previous game, as how bad his draw was, on turn six, if he had just had Primeval Titan or Summoner's Pack, one of the one of eight cards in his deck, I think he would have been fine. Just fetch up a couple lands, make a couple zombies, and then the Liliana of the Veil doesn't really do much, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, he just came out the gates too slow. Didn't have any top end either, but that's kind of what happens sometimes against decks with discard effects. Titan Shift deck can be a difficult one to board cards out of. Right. You're trying to have a high volume of ramp spells and lands. You saw the difficulty in game one for Ross. Part of it just being that he wasn't able to produce some additional ramp spells after his first one was discarded. What kind of stuff do you think he's boarding out here? I mean, there's a couple of weird one-ofs that uh, a lot of the Escape Shift decks tend to play every now and then. So Ross has uh, gone with an amalgamation of, of them. He's got one County Heart Expedition. It's kind of hit or miss. Prismatic Omen. Uh, it's a card that you want to help race against certain decks because it allows you to combo a turn faster. Uh, once you have six lands, uh, Escape Shift plus uh, Prismatic Omen is GG because all, you're, you get four Valakuts and they all count as Mountains. Um, other than that, the Moon Volley, Acid Moss, and the Tor Chandra Torch of Finals, ne neither of these cards seem all that good. So all these cards can probably come out. I think County Heart Exhibition might be the only one that stays because it's kind of like a two-for-one in a matchup that's uh, fairly resource-dependent. Lightning Bolt also doesn't seem super good, but, you know, there are some targets from the opposing, opposing side. A uh, Planeswalker that ticks down, Dreadhold Arcanist is potentially problematic. Yeah, four lightning bolts in the main deck for Miriam this weekend. Yeah, it's fairly common. Some decks don't deal themselves damage, so lightning bolt provides you that uh, two to three point buffer that you need sometimes to uh, use scape shift with seven lands to deal 18 damage for the win. But yeah. Do you, you know. sometimes see a three mana sweeper in some of those slots? Sure. Anger of the Gods, Sweltering Suns. It feels to me like maybe it is a nod to wanting to kill Stoneforge Mystic before a Batter Skull gets your opponent out of seven lands, scapeshift range. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Stoneforge Mystic really pushed 
a lot of people into needing to interact in the first two turns of the game. And if people were playing three mana removal spells, a lot of those people shifted to two or one mana removal spells. Even something like Sudden Shock, I think, would be better than a sweeper like Anger of the Gods in this particular format, just because of how prevalent Stoneforge Mystic was all weekend. I'm always happy to see a Sudden Shock. Yeah, that card's nice. <laughs> Split Second's a dumb mechanic, but Sudden Shock is nice. I say dumb mechanic. It's it's a weird mechanic. The gameplay is not good, but yeah. the split second this cards were cost we're playing, pretty reasonably. We're playing Hearthstone. This resolves. <laughs> I'm mad that split second cards are instants and sorceries. I feel like they should all just been sorceries. So you play the thing on your turn, it resolves the end. Because it feels real bad when you're like doing stuff on your turn, your opponent's like, uh uh uh, wait a second. Mm. Split second. Sure. Yeah, the only one that we really see in a very negative way in modern is Angel's Grace. Yeah, I hate that the one. The gameplay is really bad. I, you know, I love that it loses to, like, Collective Brutality sometimes because it says, uh, you know, you, you can't be dealt damage to go below zero, but you can lose life to go below zero. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if they don't kill you that turn on their upkeep or whatever, they die, which is sweet. I have been happy with the interaction that Lava Dart has against that deck. <laughs> I bet. That's the deck I lost to. What, uh, Ad nauseum? Yeah, yeah. So we, we were talking to her like that. I just had the, the Spark of Genius or whatever. Uh, I couldn't remember what deck I lost to in the first round of PTQ the other day. Ah. My, my opponent literally just went turn three, Phyrexian, on life, turn four, kill you. Both, both games. Yeah. On life is the hardest deck. thing. <sighs> Well, the hardest thing might be Ross Marion beating this turn three Blood Moon that's about to happen. Is that harder than watching Ross shuffle for five minutes? Look, he's ready to go. John Lim is the one still mulligan and shuffling. <laughs> now, I will dig on Ross for shuffling, but you cannot do it when he's not physically shuffling. All right. Uh, you can. All right. You absolutely can. I'm lying. Might be a little unfair. Well, well Lim looking at a six-card hand that has a Blood Moon at the front. You'll have to All see right. that. <sighs> All right, then he will keep on six. Miriam will be on the play again this game. All right, Ross going to be on the play. Let's see if he can have a better start here than last game. Do you have a ramp spell? Yeah. Okay, we're doing better than the last game. <laughs> yeah, just literally any two-mana spell. <laughs> Much preferred to land go, land go, land go, land go. Look, he casts an opposite Bayloth somewhere in there. Yeah, he casts a Chandra too. Wee. Here's Sakura Tribe Elder. Lim at a Bloodstained Mire, fetching the 19 on the end step. You want to talk about designs I hate? Sakura Tribe Elder. Holy crap. I adore this card. You would. <laughs> Look, they made this card, and in like around the same time period, the like rampant growth was in every core set, and uh, it just has legs. It just gave you. They just gave rampant growth legs. Yeah, it's not fair. Remember when damage was on the stack? And you could block a two-one, and then <laughs> sack it and go get a land. That was horse. That was messed mm. up. I almost said a bad word. You did, but I didn't. <laughs> Tap Blood Crypt and step for Lim. Now he'll crack a Marsh Flats. Bolt it. All right. Thinking maybe a Dreadhorde Arcanist on the second turn here? Probably. Uh, fetching up the Swamp to make sure he doesn't lock himself out with his own Blood Moon. Use that uh, Blood Save Mire turn one to fetch a Blood Crypt. Probably uh, his only two lands to start the, the game would be my guess. Collect your Brutality. Take a mm. look at your hand. No Escalation. And no chance he accidentally takes an obstinate Bayloth, which is nice because it does only hit instants and sorceries. Escape Shift, Tireless Tracker, Summoner's Pact, and Explore. Uh, Explore or Escape Shift, I think, are the two picks. Just because uh, Explore helps ramp the. So the sequence of this game is basically going to go if John takes Escape Shift. Ross is going to fetch EOT with Skirt Tribe Elder, untap, play Tireless Tracker, play the fetch land, gain a clue, fetch, gain a second clue. 
if John does not take the scape shift, he takes Explorer or whatever, it's probably gonna the same thing is gonna happen. But if he takes the Summoner's Pact, uh, then Ross might actually just go explore and just try to, to win via a different route. Like just win via escape shift as quickly as possible. Summoner's Pact was the take. We'll see Miriam sacrifice that tri Elder end step. Goes and gets his second green source so that if he draws from Evil Titan, he can play it. Make sure to get that snow covered force in case he draws. Uh, Evil Dead, Land of the Dead, Field of the Dead, whatever, you know. There's, it's a land and there's dead stuff coming out of it, okay? I like, I like Evil Dead. It's a couple different uh, of the dead lands. You know, Lake of the Dead, not exactly modern legal. Here's that tireless tracker. Wood of Foothills is going to make two clues, a couple Sam Blacks. Down Undead. <laughs> oh, yeah. How could we forget? Yeah. A third forest, or sorry, second forest here. Don't love that. It's playing around Blood Moon. Sure. Okay, fair enough. Got to be able to cast that scape shift for more mountains. <laughs> but more likely hoping to find a primeval titan and attack for six. Sure. What he can do with scape shift, though, is actually just turn all the lands he has on the battlefield into uh, clues, which is pretty cool. So he still has a use for a scape shift even under Blood Moon. Third land for Lim is Sunbake Canyon. He'll go to 17 to cast a seasoned Pyromancer. Discards a Blood, Blood Moon and a Chandra Acolyte of Flame. It's got a signal to Ross. Something's up. So Ross draws for the turn, finds a Valk of the Molten Pinnacle. Here's Explore. Play Valka, it makes another clue. Plays Windswept Heath. Clues go up to four. Yeah, now you can fetch a Cinder Glade. Um, has three men at the ready. He can maybe explore again if he wants you to, to try to hit a land, and that'll allow him to uh, uh, crack a clue still. But it is a bit risky. Might be worthwhile just to go ahead and crack a clue and put a counter on your uh, tireless tracker. Start getting actual resources out of these uh, clues that you've generated. Sure, it represents five cards on the clues, but you have to invest a lot of mana to turn them into actual cards. Fetch to 18 for Cinderglade, now five clues. Ooh, what about Tireless Tracker plus Urza, Lord High Artificer? What about Tireless Tracker plus Scape Shift and make like six clues? What about uh, Fast Bond, Tireless Tracker, and Vintage? Yeah, you can play four Fast Bonds now, right? Yeah. Miriam's going to sacrifice a clue, track her to a 4-3, and he'll pass turn. Doesn't want to offer up the trade. Not sure I agree. Clearing all this stuff out with a bunch of clues seems reasonable, and now he's potentially opening himself up to getting hit with a lightning bolt or just a regular removal spell, and then a chunk for four. The second swamp for Lim, and there's Blood Moon. Yeah, but we have prepared for this. And now Ross is pretty happy he didn't trade, I bet. The Blood Moon here is a bit annoying for him. I really want Ross to escape shift for some clues. I think he's got enough clues. Probably just wants to save it for if he ever finds a way to, to kill the Blood Moon. Not because it's strategically sound or would have any impact on the game. Because it's sweet. I just want, yeah, because it's sweet. <laughs> There was a scape shift landfall deck back in Extended. Yeah. It was like step links, played a GOP in Knight of the Reliquary. That still exists in modern. Scape shift attack you for 50. Yeah. I was into that. I love me scape shift to grow my Knight of the Reliquary. That's nice. Scape shift Hedron Crab. That deck, didn't that deck also play uh, Bloodbraid Boom Bust? Possibly. Back when Boom Bust and Blood Red Elf worked well together. And the Flagstones Boom Bust. Yep, Flagstones was in that deck. And Ghost Quarter, you could do that whole thing. Ross cr cracks one clue. Tireless Tracker attacks for five. It'll eat an elemental. Now he can play Chandra Torch of Defiance, tick up, cast Explore if he wants, I think. Or cast a Cur Tribe Elder, rather. Gonna go with just more clues.
down to three clues. Tireless Tracker up to a 6-5. Now, Ross is under Blood Moon, but he seems like he's pretty far ahead in this game. And his deck after sideboard has a lot of ways to win that aren't just uh, Val Cut the Molten Pinnacle. We already see the Tireless Tracker doing a lot of work right now. Uh, we have um, Primeval Titan's body, you know, just works as a 6 6 trampler. Uh, if he has a Tireless Tracker on the battlefield, generates two more clues as well. Season Pyromancer attacks. Miriam is 16. It seems unlikely that Lim's going to have a lot of answers to Tireless Tracker. And here's Pillage. Pillage takes down the Snow Covered Forest, so now Miriam only working with one green mana. Now, for those of you watching, and uh, recently some changes were made to Blood Moon where the, the lands are unaffected, are, are affected by the Blood Moon as they're entering the battlefield. So Blackleaf Cliffs will enter untapped. Uh, obviously, Sunbank Canyon doesn't deal any damage. We have some updates from our other matchups. A couple what, what we of got? upsets, actually. The lower seed winning both the 1 versus 8 and the 4 versus 5. Oh, Zan lost. Russell Lee on Grixis Shadow took down Zan on Burn. Nice. And Dylan Donegan defeated teammate Collins Mullen to advance to the top four. Hmm. I like Dylan. Dylan's a good guy. Two of our three Burn players eliminated from the top eight there. Well, one of them was 100% to get eliminated, right? Hey, man, I'm just saying. I'm just reporting the facts. Oh, sure, sure. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I didn't ask for an argument, Todd. All right, there's Chandra plussing, exiling Primeval Titan, limbs to 15. Yeah, and also has the Secure Tribe Elder to potentially block Season Pyromancer and go get a land. Uh, that'll also get another clue token, which is nice. God, I just really wanted that forest to get pillaged here. But just land go for Lim. Let's take a look at Ross's list. One regular forest and one snow forest. So another pillage would actually lock him out of green mana entirely. Halfway there. Living on a prayer. <laughs> that large tireless tracker is going to become a problem, though. Growing up to an 8-7 now. I really, really want Ross to minus the Chandra on the Season Pyromancer. Unfortunately, though, John Lim has been playing this super snug. Didn't burn the coal against command. Knows that he's probably going to have to use it to get back Season Pyromancer to continually block uh, that Chandra Torture Defiance, but also to uh, just maybe reload on his hand. Another mountain and another clue for Miriam. Chandra's plussing. Summoner's Pact exiled. Can't pay for the pact, so just going to deal some damage with the Chandra. Makes sense to me. Limb to 13. I would actually not be surprised to see this Kerr Tribe to rumble here, too. Miriam's no going to hang back. Attack. Maybe he thinks a Fatal Push is waiting on John Lim's side, and John Lim can't revolt. Just land go for Lim again. Hand is another land in a Culligan's command. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, on the Lim's turn, Miriam's going to force a Vigor that Blood Moon. That's going to make this easy for Miriam. Why didn't he just win the game last turn? He uh, only had one green mana and only pitch casts on your opponent's You're turn. You're right. I'm dumb. Pitch cast. Love that mechanic. I've messed that one up before. Okay. Good. Not on air. Yeah, not on purpose. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you see Miriam fetching. Both players uh, know about escape shift in Ross's hand. Yeah, this is. There's Malakut on the point. table. Shocks that blocker. Can you get the tracker up? How big can that be? It's currently a 10. There's two clues. It is big, but the Season Fire Mancer now in the graveyard can represent two more chump blockers. True. So Ross has to go through uh, everything here to use the, the scape shift for the win. I suppose that second pillage wouldn't have done it because of that force. Another right. Valakut. Another, another clue. clue. Big attack. I'm going to start off here with a draw off of the Sunbay Canyon. Doesn't go for the chump. Knows the scape shift's there. Decides to just pack it in and save everybody some time. Game number three. Ross Miriam even things out. He will be on the draw this time. And that's where you do feel a little bit more pressure from these pillages. Right. The pillages, any sort of land destruction is always going to be a bit better on the play. I think it's one of the reasons why modern design theory has kind of moved away from land destruction because... 
It's one of those mechanics that on the play it's super good, but when you're in the draw, it's just useless. If, you're, if your opponent plays a creature on the first two turns and you don't kill that creature, all your stone rains and everything after that is just going to be setting your opponent back a little bit, but you're not actually interacting with the relevant permanents on the battlefield. It occupies this space where it is seldom fun or good gameplay, right? Your stone um, rain is either going to win the game very easily on the play if you have multiple copies, your opponent doesn't get on the battlefield, or your opponent establishes themselves and just pulls ahead. Ponza is this deck in modern. I sometimes hear players complain about it, certainly if you're playing Tron, Titan Shift, you know, the Stone Rains, the Blood Moons are going to get you. I have never registered a deck in modern that is really capable of consistently losing to Ponza. Um, the heavy one sure, mana decks, sure, sure. Uh, they're I mean, very favored against decks like that. that that's certainly fair. Uh, at the very least, I'll say the Ponza part, the Blood Moon part's a different story. Blood Moon occasionally just eliminates me from the tournament. Yeah, you mostly know. what I was getting at is the matchups are very lopsided in sure. both directions. No, and that's certainly fair. Uh, I would argue that some amount of interaction with lands is going to be healthy, especially interacting with lands uh, for a net zero resource exchange. Like Feudal Ruin, for example, is super good because it's net zero for you to interact with your opponent's lands. Um, so it gives you a way to you know, be able to interact with st stuff like Tron you know, without sacrificing a land like ghost quarter ghost quarter to kill a tron piece just feels super bad right because you give them the forest you're down a land mm -hmm. but field ruin is like the perfect balance for that type of thing and i would much rather have a lot of that kind of thing than a lot of stone rain type things yeah i buy that i like that design quite a bit actually so we have a new set release coming up throne of el drain which means we have a new creature collection exclusive playmat Four pre-releases with participating stores. You can check to see if your store will be participating at go.starcitygames.com slash pre-release. Check out the new set release. Get your hands on this new play mat. This is Bombs Awry. Bombs Awry. Uh, I believe this picture is a play on Dr. Strangelove, that uh, classic film. Forget uh, the director's name. It's escaping me at the moment. I don't remember why. I uh, did Young Frankenstein. Kubrick. Is that Kubrick? No. Did not do Bride of, Bride of Frankenstein? Or Young Frankenstein? I have a voice in my ear that's very faint. Okay. Whatever. Off it. <laughs> Sometimes I can snap that stuff off. Other times... Blazing Saddles? I Is that not the same, same guy? That's Mel Brooks. Uh, Mel Brooks didn't do Dr. Strangelove? Really? Did Young Frankenstein. Okay. 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 Okay, well, I'm getting some uh, confirmation from our director that I'm a big dummy, and it was Stanley Kubrick. See, you want to only say things you're confident on on air, not for risk of looking stupid, but because 10 people are tweeting at you right now who it is, yeah. and the first one already wasn't helpful or interesting, and the other nine are just going to wear you down. Yeah, I'm just going to block them. <laughs> My block list is so high. Because if you cared, you'd just Google it anyway. Right. Well, I'm also working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, after the fact. Sure, sure. You know. Bombs Awry, the playmat from StarCityGames.com, <laughs> featuring a, a fun <laughs> chat about Doctor Strange Love. <laughs> All right, both players here shuffling. Well, one person here is shuffling. It's Ross. It's always Ross. Who else would it be? Judge looking around. Wondering if there's anyone else that needs help with anything else. All right. Lim going to be on the play here. Hugely important if he has an early blood moon or a pillage. Uh, definitely going to be looking to go a start of the feature something like Inquisition or Thoughtseize, followed by Dreadhorde Arcanist, and then any of those powerful three drops are all desirable. There was a pause, but finally a keep on seven. Black Thief Cliffs go for Lim. How much you want to bet that this bolt's coming right now to the face? Lava spike you? Yeah. Let's well, start for Miriam as turn one, suspend search for tomorrow. That's the ideal start for the Titan Shift deck. Now I'm really glad John didn't just. I was going to say he should have main phased the. Oh, come on! What are you going to bolt? Just bolt the face. Yeah, there is the Lightning Bolt in hand. Did not use that. Turn two. Fine. It's going to fetch a Marsh Flats to 19. Finds 
Blood Crypt shocks to 17. Interesting. Well, that's a signal to me that maybe he has Pillage and not Blood Moon. Needs that second red. Yeah. Either a hand that is heavy on red mana spells. Maybe he already has a Swamp or two in the hand. Sure, sure. Here's Red Horde just Argonist. Thin the deck a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a deck thinning strategy. Well, if you have a Swamp and you have a Marsh Flats, you know, might as well go ahead and get the Marsh Flats done with. We'll go over to Miriam. Search for tomorrow. Goes down to one time counter. Looks like a couple explorers in the hand for Miriam. Looks like two explorers. Two explorers. Yeah. A classic modern play. Ross here can uh, cast explorer, draw a card. Doesn't look like he has a, a third land, though. His hand is full of ramp, but not actual lands. So probably going to play the Sakura Tribe Elder here. Next turn, going to get the land from the Tribe Builder and the land from the Search for Tomorrow. If I had to guess, he's going to go like double explore next turn. Uh, Lim just miracled that swamp. <laughs> I thought for sure Blood Moon was coming, but it's going to be Seasoned Pyromancer. It's still fine. He's probably going to pitch um, something to cast off of Arcanist if he has a good one. Bolt here is okay. He gets to translate that into a fresh card and a 1-1. One -one. And now if he attacks with the Dreadlord Arcanist, he can... Lightning Bolt, but going to go ahead and just deal one, not worry about bolting just yet. Might save that for an attack to take care of something like Chandra Torch of Defiance. Sure. Miriam to 16 off the attack. And he's going to maintain the Tribe Elder. Perhaps wants to keep some lands in the deck so he has more chance of hitting off these explorers. Search for Tomorrow goes off, finds the Snow-Covered Mountain. I understand why, but I don't think it's correct. I think you just want the max amount of mana this turn to be able to cast as many ramp spells as you can. And if he doesn't have another land in hand, the second green off of Tribe Elder could mean the difference between casting another spell or just saying go. And the cost is you get to play, uh, or you, the cost is you don't get to prevent two damage from the Seasoned Pyromancer attack. So you're saying this is my deck of mana rep spells, cast as many as you can, as fast as you can? Yeah. Literally the deck. Makes sense to me. Explore. Explore. It's a land, but it's red. Was he just hiding a forest in the wow. back left of his hand the whole time? I've been tricked. I'm mad. I'm actually mad. <laughs> There's a two explorers. Here's another snow cover mountain. He's just hiding forest on the left side of his hand with all the other lands on the right side of his hand the entire time. It's just uh, put on a good show. We're going to have words. <laughs> Now Very he's pass. guaranteed to play Primeval Titan next turn, but I'm not sure if uh, he has the tools to actually win the game next turn. Probably not. Maybe needs uh, another land plus escape shift. I'm so sad every time Lim taps three mana and it's not Pillage <laughs> or Blood Moon. Thoughtseize is a big one, though. Thoughtseize could be huge. It's a Blackleaf Cliffs as a land, though. It's going to enter tapped. Yep, that does not That's quite brutal. play here. So this could be a huge window for Miriam. Five lands now, plus a Tribe Elder. Lightning Bolt takes care of the Arcanist before attacks. And now he missed out on that three damage from the Bolt in the graveyard on the previous turn. And that three damage might end up making a ton of difference here. Ross is going to go down to 14, facing off against this board full of pressure. I mean, this is the spot where Miriam has multiple cards that just win the game. Right. So three damage could be something, but it already is relying on Ross bricking here. Now, if he has Primeval Titan, he gets to untap Titan for, even without a land, he gets to go Titan for Mountain Valakut. He gets to shoot down one of the Season Power Masters to protect his life total. If he does draw a land that uh, counts as a mountain, he can do that plus uh, get maybe like two Valakuts out of the, uh, the deck with a Primeval Titan and then play the mountain and shoot down two things. And then he's threatening lethal on the following turn. Tribe Elder finds another mountain. The mountain's quite a bit better than the forests in this deck. Yeah, you usually need a couple forests to make sure you can fetch up a second green source. But obviously you want a bunch of mountains for your Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. Well, here's Primeval Titan. Already five mountains on the table. Ross going to fetch up a Valakut and a Mountain here, more than likely. 
I don't love getting the Cinder Glade. I think I'd much rather get the Stomping Ground, but he's trying to diversify the lands in case he needs to uh, do the thing with Field of the Dead. Sure. Cinder Glade shoots down one of the seasoned Pyromancers. And I think this is a kind of the point of no return for Lim. Not sure you can come back from this. It would require something like Liliana of the Veil to kill the Primeval Titan right now, and then Ross just having an embarrassing follow-up turn. Right. Doesn't have enough mana to go like Lily plus uh, Blood Moon. Doesn't even have like a pillage here to take care of the Valakut. It's just too little too late. Didn't interact in the right ways at the right times. Some big canyon and crack that. That's where Lim will start. That's Blood Moon. That's a start. Turns the Titan into just a 6-6 six, six Trampler. Yeah, it keeps fetching up lands, but doesn't really do a whole lot other than that. And the question is, how effectively can John race a 6-6? Six, six? I mean, he can take a hit and just start attacking for five, but he's going to send in here preemptively. Ross is going to get a, basically a freebie block on the Season Pyromancer, taking three down to 11, and you got to wonder about that lightning bolt that John chose not to cast with the Dreadful Darkness just a few turns ago. That three damage might end up mattering in this race. Yeah, that's definitely the check. The conversation around that has certainly changed with this course of events. Uh, Ross, looks like he has a Summoner's Pact here. I think he can go Summoner's Pact for Reclamation Sage, Sage down the Blood Moon and attack for the win. If that's his line of play, we could have our last semifinalist here. Yeah, that is a summer's pack. <laughs> Counting out some mana. So it looks like he has summoner's pack and primeval titan in hand. He'd like to be able to cast the sage and the titan here. Yeah, I don't think he can. I think he's one mana short. But what he can do is <laughs> summoner's pack for Rex sage, attack, do a bunch of damage. And I think he has a second summoner's pack for his Kurt Tribelder, which can get a mountain, which will deal a giant amount of damage. Saw Ross doing some math in real time there. He's lining up the lands he's going to find with the primeval titan and the card he's going to find with the summoner's pack. Oh no. Is he looking for a card not in his deck? So it looks like he set aside as if he's grabbing Reclamation Sage, but now he's checking his sideboard. It might be over there. Oh, that face sells it. Reclamation Sage is not in that deck. So now, you're going to have to do some math again, Ross, because you have to find a different card. He has to get Sakura Tribelder to go get the other forest to be able to pay for the Summoner's Pact. He's so dejected. That was just a, a very awkward sideboard error. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. Tireless Tracker was found. He didn't go get the Sakura Tribolder. Does Oh, he can get the second forts with a Primeval Titan. I'm stupid. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that, that part's not difficult. Well, neither is hiding in Reclamation Sage against the Blood Moon deck, but <laughs> here we are! <laughs> the winner of this match will be playing against Harlan Fear's four-color Urza deck. I think Ross might actually still end up winning this game. He's going to get the second forest. The only way he straight up loses is if John peels Pillage, kills one of the forests, and then Ross is just going to die to the Summoner's Pact trigger. But he's swinging in for six. He plays a tireless tracker. He's got a bunch of clues, got a bunch of free cards, and he has another Primeval Titan in hand. So he can, uh, uh, you know. Titan tracking down, snow covered forest, and stomping ground. So this is mana to pay for that summoner's pact. Yeah, if a pillage comes here, the miracle pillage for John Lim, can he do it? Modern classic players, if you place between ninth and What a strange sequence of events, folks. Hazred is the front card in Lim's hand. Too many cards to make that effective immediately. We might see Miriam do this the hard way. He's got the uh, deck box on top of his deck to remember pay for that pact. If I'm Ross, I literally just put all four lands next to the deck and just leave them tapped. Lim here, tapping four, going for the Hazorat. 
It's a dead card at the moment. He still has three in hand, doesn't attack or block. Just has her at go, and Sep will see Miriam sacrifice those two clue tokens, grow the tireless tracker. Now he'll pay for Summoner's Pact. And draw for turn. Yeah, now he gets a chunk in here with two large creatures. Gets to make some more clues. Can't play the other Primeval Titan this turn. But still uh, dealing five to John at the very least, even if it gets or some amount of damage with the trample on uh, Primeval Titan at the very least. And then John probably has a chump block, the tireless tracker. That that window to pillage the forest. Yeah, that, that that's over now. So yeah. Lim has to do something about the battlefield from here. Attack with both creatures, Elemental jumps in front of the tracker. Six points from the Titan come across, Lim to five. Ross is going to have nightmares about that Reclamation Sage. And it's not even going to end up mattering. But he'll still sweat it till the end of time, and I will sweat him for it till the end of time. Absolutely. Really happy we had the face cam shot going there. <laughs> Kudos to our new director for that one. Yeah, whoever gets the uh, first <laughs> Twitch clip maybe uh, yeah. makes up a YouTube video, puts some music to it. Yeah. Hello, oh, darkness, yeah. my old friend. Yeah, well, someone already did that one. But yeah, that, that, that still -edit, plays. Re-edit, new edits. That still plays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Update, the, update the tape. He's won so many events since then, though. Like, he had a lot of success with Is It Phoenix. The joke doesn't have to be real. <laughs> it just has to be funny. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Here's an attack for one, Miriam to ten. To me, this implies that somehow John can uh, survive this attack from the Primeval Titan, which I don't know how that's possible. Because the Hazret can't attack or block. Sacrifice two clues at the end step. Tireless Tracker up to an eight power creature. But that Primeval Titan alone is looking mighty lethal here. Land, clue, crack. Fistful of cards from Miriam, though I believe he has everything he needs on the battlefield. Here's an attack with Primeval Titan and Tireless Tracker. Also find two more lands, get two more clues. Whee! Looks like John may have realized his error or just had no way out to begin with. So if he blocks the tower tracker, he's still taking six trample. Needs a, a direct removal spell for the. Uh... Okay. Here's the Hazard activation, but still three cards in hand. Ooh, Surgical Extraction targeting his Thoughtseize. Puts him to two cards in hand. I imagine at least one of them is Thoughtseize. This so, might be the biggest brain play I have ever seen. Is this? Is this going to reverse? He gets to block he the gets Titan. He gets to chump soak and up block, four damage. Takes two. Ross plays another Primeval Titan or an obstinate Bayloth, and then John can peel like a removal spell that's cheap, maybe. Miriam's going to sacrifice those clues to try to get out of this combat ahead of time. I assume we'll be going to blockers here, though. Yeah, I think Ross was maybe digging for a lightning bolt before blocks. If he had found it, he would have won on the spot. That is wild. Force of Vigor, post-combat, Ross gets to play Secure Tribe Elder. Sack it, and he has three Valakut the Moment Pinnacles on the battlefield. That's going to deal nine to John Lim. Seal the deal. All right, so Miriam had it rolled up there. That was a pretty cool play for John Lim. Really cool deck, great tournament. Despite that misstep with the sideboarding there for Miriam, we do see him advance to the top four with the Titan Shift deck. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. That was nice. That was fun. A good match to watch before we end our day here. But two more matches still left.